hello from Busan, everybody. Uh, I'm making this video because I've been getting messages from the States saying, Don, are you okay? How are you doing? We're, we're hearing things. Uh, and I just want to set the record straight. Because, of course, coronavirus is happening here. It's happening all over the world. And I imagine there's some sketchy bits of information going out. So the first thing I want to say is uh, I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I'm not afraid. So cheers to that. Uh, and I'm not afraid actually because of everything you've been hearing. We're getting a bit of information overload here, which I'll get to. But uh, the way the Korean government's been responding to coronavirus uh, fills me with confidence. I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with how things are going and, and what the situation is. And just to give you a description of how things are going before this all broke big, when the disease was first identified in China and, and announced, Korea jumped into action. Because five years ago, the MERS outbreak happened, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. And when that happened, the Korean government, they were perceived as treating it like a PR problem, not a public health problem. So they kept information about who was sick, where these patients were, where they were being transported to, kept it under wraps. Uh, and in the end, I think 180 some people were infected and 30 odd people died. Obviously, the numbers right now are much higher than that. I think as of today, the death toll is 51 and the confirmed cases is over 7,000. But because of that incident five years ago, the government, well, the next administration, because that administration kind of got the axe because that was not the only issue they treated as a PR problem instead of a public health or public safety issue. So the next administration came in and said, we're not going to be caught flat-footed next time. They put a lot of time, effort, and energy into developing cases and tests for, for new versions of coronavirus. And they had policies in place. They said, okay, as soon as this happens, as soon as the next version of Corona comes along, we're going to be on it. We're, we have plans. So when Corona was announced in China, they started immediately screening people who were showing symptoms when they came back from China. And they did a really good job of identifying and containing all the cases. And during this period, there was public information about it saying, hey, there are people who are sick, there's this disease out there. If you show symptoms, don't go to work. We will cover your sick leave costs if you don't go to work. So one of my colleagues actually, this is one of the final weeks of the semester, came to work with a cold. They had a runny nose and a cough, and the school just sent them home. Said, go home, don't come back for a week. And they didn't have to worry about losing their job, losing any of their sick time, losing any pay. Because the government was actually backing it up and covering those costs. So that companies and institutions would send their employees home. Say, get out of here, you're sick, we don't want you. So at that point, the disease was contained. And then Jesus took the wheel. I want to be delicate about how I describe the Xinjiangji church because I'm an atheist. So I have no special allegiance to the organization, but also it's hard for me to identify how they're distinct from you know, evangelical Christianity at all. But Xinjiangji is a Christian sect in Korea whose leader claims to be the second coming of Christ. And apart from that, standard evangelical stuff with cult of personality. The leader says they have a particular interpretation of the Bible, uh, church attendance is mandatory, and your free time needs to be spent evangelizing and proselytizing other people to bring them in. Not too different from the Mormons or Scientology in that respect. What becomes a problem is they also have the idea that your misfortunes aren't an issue of 
circumstance or systems or spite from other people, it's the result of sin. So if you get sick, it's not because of some virus. God's mad at you, and you should be ashamed. What do people do when they're ashamed? They hide their shame. So you have people who are gathering in enclosed spaces regularly, spending their free time going, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? And not admitting when they're sick. So naturally, one of the people came down with the disease. Their fellow parishioners caught the disease. It spread to those parishioners' families and then those people's community. And the numbers jumped off the way you're seeing now. Not planned. It was not done intentionally. I have been seeing that idea pop up, that people are intentionally getting themselves sick and trying to infect other people. Uh, th there is no Corona Karen out there trying to get a high score or something. It's just a disease. This is what happens. You know, your kid comes home from preschool with chicken pox. It's because that's how diseases work. It's not a conspiracy. It's a contagion. But now the numbers are jumping off and the government's kind of pissed because, hey, we had this contained, you guys screwed it up. And the leadership of Xinjiangji didn't help things by trying to keep their member list secret. And of course, they were trying to keep the member list secret uh, to avoid religious persecution and to avoid screwing up the grift. You know, bit of both. But because of that, they ended up replicating the mistake that the Korean government made five years ago. So they tried to keep it under wraps. They tried to keep the information secret. That made everything worse. The government, though, is not keeping information under wraps. So the where, where things stand now in Busan is school's been delayed by three weeks. Everyone's kind of self-quarantining. Everyone's staying in unless they absolutely have to go out. And the city's kind of a ghost town. Uh, I've been out to the entertainment district. I still go out every weekend to meet friends for pizza and beer. I've been going out to the movies you know, at least once a week. And it's not because I'm irresponsible. It's because the government is keeping us all informed. My phone's blowing up every day with messages from the government saying, uh, here are the confirmed spaces that Busan patient 26 has been to on this date. Here are the confirmed tracks of Busan patient 31. They're keeping us informed of where infected people have been, what places may still carry parts of the virus, and essentially what places are still perfectly safe to go to. Most people are staying inside, they're avoiding going out, uh, and, and frankly, I don't go out much anyway, so yeah, I say I'm going to the movies, I'm going to meet friends. It means I leave my house twice a week. And I'm still going to work. None of my Korean colleagues are at work, but my contract requires that I be in the office, so I still have to go to the office. Which sounds like a bad thing. You know, wait, there's a disease out there and it sounds irresponsible. There's no one in my office. There's no one for me to come in contact with and catch the disease. So things are going well. They're keeping us informed. In fact, uh, in the description, I have a link to a website with a map of Korea that is compiling all the data the government is putting out about where people have been. And I'll even have a little bit of Korean text you can copy and paste into it to see exactly where I live and where and when people have been through with Corona. You know, we're safe because we're informed. Now granted, that information overload can be a source of stress. And it's like, oh my God, there, there are a hundred new cases today. There are you know, how many tens of millions of people in the country? Yeah, but there were a hundred new cases yesterday. And they keep sending us where these people were only spots. And one of my colleagues is in fact feeling overwhelmed by this. They're nervous about Corona. I'm not nervous about it because I'm like, oh, I don't need to worry about that spot. I don't need to worry about that spot. I'm here. Everything's safe. Good to go. I am worried about you all in the U.S. because you don't have Medicare for all, you don't have a functioning CDC, and from everything I'm hearing, the government's treating this the way the Korean government did five years ago. They're treating it like a PR problem, trying to keep the reporting of the numbers 
as low as possible. I don't know what to tell you in response to that. I mean, wash your hands, wash them, scrub for 20 seconds, saying happy birthday to yourself twice. If you're, if you're done scrubbing and you're not done singing, you're not done scrubbing. But otherwise, yeah, there's not a whole lot I can say. You know, vote for Bernie. Those of you in Michigan, I'm, I'm uploading this the day before the primaries. He's the only person pushing for Medicare for all, and the only way you handle something like this is through preparation. So, uh, I hope you guys are all safe and feeling okay. Uh, everything here is fine. They're taking it seriously and responding to it. So, um, cheers to that, and cheers to you. Uh, the only effect I feel like I'm going to have from this is my summer vacation dates are going to be completely fakakta. I don't know when... I'm getting those days off. I was been planning to come visit the States during summer. That's just not going to happen now. So next winter is when I'm planning to come by. But otherwise, I hope you're well. Everything here is good. Take care of yourselves.